Hey, let me show you something. On my rack, I have a hardware EQ, a compressor, a stereo bus compressor, and also this guy, which has a preamp, a passive EQ, and also two types of compressors. And I'm gonna show you how I was able to hook them up with Cubase for hybrid mixing using this guy, the Audient ID24 little interface with ADAT expansion. So let's check it out. Hey, what's going on, my friend? The Chris Lim here from Mixdown Online. Okay, let's jump in Cubase and let me uh, let me have you listen to this bass right here. Okay. Okay, now this bass is going straight into the VTRC, uh, and I'm using uh, a bit of gain out of this unit, a bit of EQ, and some compression. If I bypass it. Now let me show you the setup that I'm using right now to mix with hardware from Cubase going into this very cool interface by Audient, the ID24. And by the way, Audient is sponsoring this video, so thank you very much. And also sent me uh, a Audient ID24 interface that just came out, I think, a week ago, if I'm not mistaken. And something I like about this interface is the ADAT expandability, which is going to expand the input and outputs by eight channels. Okay, so an extra eight inputs and eight outputs, which is perfect to mix with analog gear, especially if you have several pieces of gear to mix with. Now, there's a few things we need to know when we start to mix with outboard gear. Now, outboard gear, analog gear, hardware, all the same thing. Now, the signal coming from Cubase or any DAW is a digital signal. That will need to come out from the sound interface, be converted back into analog, and then go through the hardware, out of the hardware, back into the sound interface, be converted back into digital and then be recorded in Cubase. So you will need at least four outputs if you want to work with one single stereo hardware, like my Tegler Cam, for example, which is a stereo bus compressor. So in that case, output one and two from your interface will go to feed your studio monitors and output three and four can go straight into your stereo analog compressor. Then you'll need to connect the whole thing back into your sound interface uh, through a line input or line inputs. But in a situation like myself, where I have several hardware to work with, having only an extra pair of analog outputs is not going to do the trick. So I need way more outputs and inputs. And this is where the ADAT expandability is going to be very useful. So this again will add an extra eight in and out channels. But the small hick is that I'm going to need extra converters to be able to convert uh, from digital to analog and then from analog back to digital those extra eight channels. So the use of extra converters is mandatory for this type of setup. In my case, I'll be using my Lynx Aurora 16, which is gonna give me an extra 16 inputs and outputs, which is great for what I need. So I only need eight, I'll be good enough with this unit. A cheaper alternative is to combine this sound interface with the Audient SP8, which will give you an extra eight channels of inputs and outputs. And you can easily combine this with this Audient ID24 interface. And I think the Audient Evo SP8 goes out at 499 US dollars. So it's a very good and cheap option if you wanna start mixing with hardware. Now, first let's go check the Audient software that comes with the ID24 interface. Uh, and this is how it looks like. I have uh, listed all of my available inputs. Uh, so the inputs from my two preamps that I have on this interface, mic one and mic two. And then I have what's coming out of the DAW, the computer, uh, with uh, channel one, two, uh, DAW three and four, uh, DAW five and six. And then I have the OPT, if you look at the top right of the, um, the software, this is gonna go for optical. So I'm just gonna click on it and that will give me access to all the digital inputs that I have available for me to use. I'm gonna go on top, under view, go down to show system panel 
And there you go. Now on the system panel, uh, something important I need to do is to uh, make sure that ADAT is the option selected for digital inputs and digital outputs. Uh, then there's the default clock source. Now this is important to set up right away. Uh, the clock is the, uh, the communication between the interface and my links converters. Okay, they need to be able to communicate with each other. So this way the master side will be able to, uh, to let know the slave side, which sample rate to use, for example. So if I want my interface to be the source clock or the master clock, I'm going to keep it to internal, which is INT right here. And this is what I did on my side. Uh, but now I have a green dot, which lets me know that I have a converter that can act as a master also for the clock. So if my links converter is the master. In this case, I'm going to have to set up the sample rate from the links converters, and this will send the information through the clock uh, to my interface. Uh, but I'm doing it the other way around. So now that my interface is the master, when I set up the sample rate from my interface or from Cubase, it will send that message to uh, the links converters and the links converters will adjust the sample rate according to the sample rate that I have set up from my interface. From this point, the system can use the ADAT connections to send the clock information between the master unit and the slave unit. But in my case, I'm going to use the word clock output that I have available on this interface. And for this, I'm going to need a word clock cable which I have connected from my ID24 going straight into the word clock input on my links converters. Now, if we look at the ADAT cables, how they look like, they are very tiny. And these cables will support uh, up to eight channels at lower sample rates uh, from 44.1 to 48 kilohertz and four channels at a higher sample rate like 96 kilohertz. So this is pretty much it when it comes to the system panel. Very straightforward, very easy to set up. Now in Cubase, I'm going to go straight into my audio connections window and I'm going to click on external effects. And this is where I'll be able to create my hardware in and outs straight in Cubase and use that similar to as I use a plugin. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, so first I have one set up for my Tegler Creme, one stereo external effect, which is going out of my interface uh, using ADAT1 and ADAT2. And then the return bus is gonna be the input, okay, the ADAT input of my interface, which is uh, gonna be one and two again. So the route is very simple. The signal goes out of Cubase from the uh, audience ID24 interface, goes into the light pipe cable, straight into the links converters, gets converted into audio, then gets out of the converters uh, in analog, and then gets connected straight into my hardware. In my case, I'm using a patch bay to do the whole thing. If you don't know what a patch bay is, I made a video on this. I'm gonna leave the link on top and down below. Go check it out. And then it's just gonna go back from the outboard gear back into my links converters, then back into the light pipe cable, back into my, uh, my interface, and then back in Cubase uh, using ADAT1 and 2 as the inputs goes. So I have the same for my, uh, my STEM Audio SA76D+. This time around, I'm using ADAT Output 3 and uh, ADAT Input 3. Uh, same for my uh, STEM Audio uh, uh, EQ and the VTRC, okay, so. The rest follows uh, ADAT4 and then for the VTRC, ADAT input and output five. Then I'll be able to insert those external effects like I do when using a plugin. Okay, so let's say, uh, for example, I have my kick channel right here. If I go down to Steinberg, go down to external plugins, Okay, now they are all used at the moment in my session. But for example, if I remove this one and I bring it back, there you go, it's gonna be listed right here. So this is my STAM Poltec Type EQ. And there you go, this is what I'm gonna see. Uh, so now there's a uh, delay, which is going to be the delay compensation for uh, the whole route that the signal is going to take. Uh, that will create, it's going to take time. So uh, Cubase will need to compensate for that time delay. Uh, and to measure that delay, you just click on measure delay. And then in my case, it's uh, set up to, there you go, it's set up to uh, 0 0.08 milliseconds. So I need to make sure that I do this on all those external effects 
type plugins. And I only have one available per external effect, okay? So once it's used, it's not gonna be available for another channel because it's connected to that one piece of gear. So I have another external effect uh, straight on this uh, snare, uh, which is going to uh, straight into the Stam 76D+. Uh, and again, I'm just gonna measure the delay. And there you go. So uh, 0 0.08 milliseconds. Uh, I have one of on my stereo outputs on my stereo bus, which is going to my uh, Tegler Creme stereo bus compressor. So again, I'm gonna click on measure delay. And my last one is going into, it's a bass. Uh, my bass is going to straight into the VTRC. So I'm using four units straight out of this mix. And this is actually a song I'm gonna release soon. It's one of my uh, one of my own. And I'm in the middle of the mix right now. So this is how it goes for drums and bass. So if I test this out, this is what I get. So I can see the signal going into those uh, uh, digital inputs, which are coming back from the Lynx converters. So the first two are from my Tegler Creme, which is a stereo bus compressor again, and then my other uh, units. And there you go. So this is basically how I can work with analog gear in Cubase uh, using this very cool interface, which is very small, very compact. I kind of like it. And also with the help of my Lynx converters linked to this uh, interface. So as you can tell, it's not that complicated and works pretty well, especially in Cubase. Now on top of working on the hybrid uh, mixing setup, uh, you can also use uh, external preamps, you know, to add on top of those uh, uh, included preamps that we have on the Audient ID24. So I can actually use my Lynx converters, uh, connect my preamps that I have. I have four Vintec preamps and also a couple of uh, Drummer 1960 preamps that I can connect straight into my Lynx converters, which will then go into my uh, Audient ID24 interface. So this way I can use external preamps in a recording session on top of the included preamps that I have on this interface. And that is going to expand by eight additional channels my recording setup, which is quite nice. Uh, so you get a lot with this type of interface. It's a small compact interface. It goes out at 399 US dollars. And there's also other very nice features that we get with this interface. For example, if I go back into the system panel, uh, a cool feature is the talkback which is very useful when recording with musicians in a studio. And you can set that up straight by using one of the, of the two preamps or from an external preamp going through ADAT connections, uh, or you can even use any external devices from your computer. Uh, so my MacBook Pro microphone can be my talkback microphone or any type of USB microphone connected to my computer. And this is actually very cool and practical. And there's also a very nice solution loopback system that you can use uh, if you want to record straight into Cubase, um, you know, some signal coming out of YouTube, for example, or from another app uh, from your computer. That can be easily done using the loopback feature of the ID24. So this is a very nice blend of uh, the ID14 and also the ID44, which is much bigger, which have more preamps also. So you kind of get the best of both worlds when it comes to the ID24. There's more very cool features that we have with the ID24. I'm not gonna talk about those in this video, but if you wanna check the website, I'm gonna leave the link down below. Uh, check it out, let me know what you think. And what I wanna know is what about your mixing setup? Do you mix with analog gear? Do you have like a kind of an hybrid setup when mixing? Or is this something that you would like to do at some point to incorporate some hardware when mixing, or this is just not something that you're planning on doing. Let me know in the comments section. And also, if you have any other questions or comments, uh, let me know down below. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.